arrived. The police had set up a perimeter defense system to protect City Hall and the councillors. They even put cellophane on one of the statues to protect it. However, what caught them by surprise was that the protesters had no plans to enter the building. The entire event was a staged decoy. The real target was an abandoned building a few blocks from City Hall. The plan worked brilliantly. There were no police officers at the building to stop the protesters from entering. Hey, can we get some people down here? What's happening? We have guard the door. The cops are coming out. don't want anyone else coming in, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and s allegedly they've said that people can leave with no problems. Is that right? Yeah. That's good. So we have to talk about if we want to do that, how we facilitate doing that, because it's probably a trick. They probably just want to open one of these doors. What happened? How come the plan was to take City Hall and we landed up over here? Well, the APC is, uh, makes their own plans. I'm just the legal support for them, so. Wherever they end up is where they end up. Um, and it looks like they've ended up in a building they want to turn into housing for women, so that's great. The police responded by laying siege to the building, and anyone who tried to get food or water or blankets into the building was immediately arrested. What I wish to do is provide food and water and blankets to, to people inside. I understand that people are freezing on the Would street. Like They're lawyer. inside the building. Now they're trying to starve and freeze homeless people out of this building. I think it's shameful and they should be embarrassed. Every night I leave work, we close the doors at 5 o'clock and there are women that go out on the street and they have nowhere to go. And every morning, when we open our doors, there are people sleeping in our doorways. That's every service in the downtown east side. It's services across the city. When are people going to care? When are people going to step up and do something? And I don't care who it is, all levels of government, the police, the general public, anybody. The mayor of Vancouver responded by calling a press conference. Why? Are they already going to remove the squad? When are you planning to remove the squad? Are there any plans in place to deal with them? I mean, uh, they, they are saying that they don't have any water, warm blankets. What's the city doing to deal with the squad that's so close by to City Hall? We have our housing specialist who is there offering them housing and offering them support uh, if, if they leave. I am appealing to them to leave. It's an illegal act and they should not do that. i have been at the building for the last 48 hours. And despite the mayor's claim, there was definitely no housing specialist on site offering people free housing. The response from the city came in the form of a city bus filled with riot police. resisting arrest.
people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Nobody is resisting the mask. We'll leave when you come and take us out. No need for guns and shooting guns. When the world arrives in 2010, what kind of a city do you want them to find? The way the mayor was going to ensure that Vancouver was ready to welcome the world in 2010 was by introducing Project Civil City. This project was meant to restore order to unruly Vancouver. Many of the initiatives had to do with the problems caused by homelessness and poverty. This was of great concern to the people who worked and lived in the downtown east side. Um, now we have Civil City. Now that people are in survival mode, which is what we see on the streets, they won't be able to sit down or lie down or panhandle or search for bottles easily. And that's when we read the brochure, we looked at the no sit, no, die, no lie down um, bylaw, and that was very alarming. I would like to ask you and the mayor how it is you're spending a million dollars of what I'm supposed to be on a table being consulted about to, to have several meetings come up with what we're going to do with the legacy, and you're sitting here spending a million dollars of it. How dare you? Yeah. You've got the city coming in. How dare you? You're wasting my time. You're wasting the time of everybody down here who sits at this table with this bullshit about the Olympic legacy. There is no Olympic legacy. This is the Olympic legacy. Ticket people, hassle the dying, make life as miserable for people as possible so you can clear them off the streets in time for the Olympics. That, that's what this is. Let's face it, that's what it is. I think it's also important, um, following process, that we talk honestly about what this is about. So when I look at the therefore be it resolved that council is committed to Project Civil City and will seek two and I, items one through four, I don't think it's a coincidence that the date uh, that's been set for implementation is 2010 for all four items. I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that the parliamentary secretary to the minister for the Pacific Gateway in the 2010 Olympic and Paralympic Games is a member of the Civil City Leadership Council. I don't think it's a coincidence that a million dollars in Olympic legacy money is being spent on this initiative. I would suggest an amendment to the whereas is that makes it clear, whereas Vancouver is hosting the Olympics and this council wants the streets cleaned up uh, for the Olympics, we're bringing this forward because that's what this is about. But despite Sam Sullivan's statement that he was going to enact this kind of uh, project anyway, uh, but when you read the actual report, there's frequent mentions of the upcoming 2010 Olympic Games, and uh, it's not surprising. It's it's what most recent host cities have done uh, to clean up the image of the city, because the Olympics have a lot to do with image making, um, to get it to be a desirable tourist destination, a desirable uh, centre for business, and so on. Uh, all that. Um, seems to require no visible social problems like homelessness. What happened to the homeless during the Atlanta Games? There were 10,000 African American men who'd been living on the streets who were um, taken, given one-way bus tickets and uh, taken back to what was euphemistically called their home communities, uh, which meant that uh, they were taken right out of Atlanta to uh, more rural parts of Georgia where they may have come from many, many years before. And that, in a sense, quote, cleared up, cleaned up the city of its visible homeless population. And if you actually honestly believe that this is the right thing to do, then I feel sorry for you. I really do feel sorry for you, that you could see the plight of other people, that you could see the desperation of people in this city, and that what you and the mayor could think of and be, and be supported by the MPA is, gee, let's give them a ticket. Let's make sure they can't lie down. 